All right. Let me know if you guys can see and hear me here. Let's keep my fingers crossed. Let's hope this works. Let's see. I don't know. Can y'all see me? Can y'all hear me? I don't know if can y'all see me. Oh, okay. I okay, good. Y'all can see me and hear me. Yay! <laughs> Shit. Oh my God. Thank you guys. Um, I'm on StreamYard. I don't know what is going on with YouTube's new live streaming application. Hey, you guys. <laughs> hey mods. I'm seeing everybody in here. Y'all like the hair? Yes. <laughs> you know how like you be forgetting that you ordered something. And so I was straightening up going through my little wig closet. And I was like, hold on, there's a, a, a brand new wig in here that I haven't slayed from the summer. So the other night I was talking to Dollface. Um, he was calling, checking on me. And, you know, we were following up with each other because we hadn't talked in like a week or so. And so I was talking to him, which is ironic because he's the wig slayer. And I was slaying this wig while I was talking to him. So I told him next time I go live, let me know if I did a great job. <laughs> So I'm so glad you guys like it. Um, YouTube is bugging. They have a new live streaming system. We can't use the classic system to stream anymore. And that's how I was streaming, just using the classic. For some reason, the new version that they have, it's not working for me, honey, which should not be surprising because nothing ever works for me on YouTube the way it needs to. Um, today was just giving me more errors. It wasn't connecting. So I was like, Crystal Nicole texted me yesterday and was like, just go on StreamYard the next time you have issues. And I'm like, you know what? Perfect idea. So that's what I'm doing. I'm StreamYarding this. You guys can see me on Facebook and on YouTube. So I hope everybody's doing good. Oh my gosh, I love the hair. Yes, honey. <laughs> Sometimes you got to switch it up, right? So let me go ahead and read the super chat that this young lady sent because I don't want to miss what you have wrote. But Nomi, Nobi Brooklyn sent it to the other stream. She sent $10 and she says, thank you for sharing your time with us. It's a blessing. You're beautiful in real life via Zoom. Thank you so much. And I had an awesome time yesterday when YouTube wasn't working. I had to you know, run errands. So I ended up doing a two and a half hour Zoom session. And we had a good time. I hope you guys like learned a lot and walked away with more knowledge about the medical system worldwide and you know everything that's going on with the school system. So we had a lot of deep conversations. It was really nice to meet a lot of you guys and talk to you guys. We had over 300 people show up. Shout out to the one person who came through. And when I tell you, she was knocked out. She was in the bed, knocked out sleep. She was like, I'm going to come to this meeting no matter what. And everybody took screenshots of her and they sent me the screenshots this morning. I was crazy. <laughs> I was cracking up. She literally was in, on her bed with her pillow, knocked out with her Zoom webcam on sleep. <laughs> I don't know who that was. Is she in here? That had me cracking up when I seen he was sending me the screenshots. Like, sis was like, I'm about to come to this meeting, hook a crook. And she was in there knocked out sleeping on the bed. And everybody was taking screenshots of her. But, you know, that that's family. You know what I'm saying? That's what family does. Um, shout out to Javon Drew. Thank you for the $49.99. I appreciate it, love. Thanks for coming through. Um, Alyssa Stroud says, hey, T, today is my 31st birthday. I have been watching you since 2012. Thank you for being unbiased. Um, thank you for bringing unbiased, informative news, sending love. Thank you so much and happy birthday to you. Thanks for coming through. I really appreciate it. So, honey, Oh, it's been a day. It's been a day. So we got over a thousand people. We got like close to 4,000 people in here watching. That's what's up. Um, the Brandon show says, it's the blonde for me, sis. I'm glad you're feeling better. Thank you. I am feeling much better. Um, it was a long, you know, like week just mentally trying to get back in the game. And, you know, when, when you're faced with your mortality again, it just makes you like really reevaluate shit. Like I got a lot of stuff to do. I got a lot of goals I'm trying to hit. Got a lot of plans. You know what I'm saying? I'm not ready for 2020 to take me out yet, you know? So I'm, I'm hanging in there. So thank you so much. Um, Yeah, so the Zoom meeting was, was cool. I really enjoyed it. Thank you to everybody who's joined the Discord. It's just become like family. 
Um, we're doing our first movie night this Friday. So if you guys don't know, I posted on Instagram. I posted on the Discord. It's I made I made it where you guys choose because I don't want to you know put my time on you guys. So I was like, okay, let's do a poll. So you know the winner is what time it will be. So it's going to be Friday at eight p.m. We're going to be watching Social Dilemma via Netflix. And so make sure you have a Netflix account. But I'm excited. I'm about to have my nacho chips, my popcorn. I got a few people coming over, you know what I'm saying, drinks. We're going to watch it all together. And there'll be a chat room. So as we're watching it, we'll be able to chat. So I'm, I'm super excited for this. So I can't wait. I hope you guys come to movie night. If you don't know about it, please go to the Discord. Everything is written in the updates. Um, make sure you guys download the app that I sent out. And um, we're going to be ready to rock and roll Friday. I saw, um, anyways, so there's a lot to get into today. Okay, it's a lot of stuff going on in the news. I was so mad because I was so hyped to do the stream yesterday. But it's okay. Today's a new day and I'm still I'm just as hype. Okay. Lots of stuff to talk about. I really want to talk about as well all this mess with the presidential debate. So let's start with let's start with the elephant in the room, okay? Um, the presidential debate yesterday. So after I streamed, I went upstairs. I think I had missed like the first twenty minutes, but I went back and watched it. That was a hot damn mess. Like, literally, we look like the political, I mean, we just look like political imbeciles at this point. America does. It's like we are living in a real world reality television show. You know, the fact that Donald Trump could not stop over talking him and because of his energy and his just lack of respect, that made Joe Biden follow suit as well. And then he started over talking him and it was just like two grown men you know, just going back and forth, not giving each other that respect. And the, the moderator, what the what the hell was his deal? I forget his name. Like so I saw a, a meme, my homeboy sent it to me, um, where they're like, next time have Samuel L. Jackson hosted. So he can be like, I said two minutes, motherfucker. <laughs> Y'all know how Samuel L. Jackson gets, right? That's what a lot of people were saying because the moderator was just like so laxy daisy and Oh, you only have two minutes. Oh, you guys calm down. And they they ran over him. They totally ran over him. And I think, what's up, Facebook family? I see y'all coming through. Thank you guys for the comments. Appreciate it. Um, I just felt like it was just, there was such a lack of respect. You know, Trump bringing up Joe Biden's kids and, you know, that was crazy. And Joe Biden calling him a clown and saying, shut up, man. I'm like, Wow. And then the CNN anchor, I forget her name, when I was watching the CNN people's reviews and she's like, I'm sorry, I just got to say it. This was a whole shit show. Like, I wasn't like, I just, I don't know. It's just like, there's just no coof. And it's like, you know, all of this starts at the top. And when you have a president who's kind of like running America like a reality TV show and he doesn't care what comes out of his mouth, he was cursing on the stage and saying, you know, bastard. And I'm like, you know, I guess for me, when I'm in certain settings, I don't mind more loose language. Like, you know, YouTube, you know what I'm saying? We're like more laid back, we're chilled here. But when I'm watching like corporate sponsored news, no, you're not allowed to say shit show. You need to be professional. When you're the president of America, I don't want to hear you say bastards. I want you to be professional. You, I mean, just think about it. We, you know, you, you got to know your environment, right? So if you're in like a corporate boardroom, you're not going to be at your corporate job talking about bitches and hoes and mother efforts. You got to carry yourself a certain way. So it was just crazy. Like it was like by the end of the night, CNN was becoming ratchet, you know? So I just, I wasn't feeling it. Let me go ahead and show you guys these two highlights. Cause I just, I found them funny. I was on Twitter afterwards because it was so much craziness trending on Twitter. Um, Shut up man was trending. Um, Clown was trending. Who was he shouting out? The 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 PB boys. I wrote it down. Um, when he was talking about the Proud Boys, you know, he was basically shouting them out, telling them to stand back and stand by. So a lot of people said that that was some type of dog whistle. So that was trending on social media. Uh, a few people who are supposed Proud Boy members were basically like super gassed up, like, yeah, the president shouted us out and. It was a mess yesterday on Twitter. I don't know who I went on Twitter, but it was a mess. Look, 
Somebody on Facebook, Andrea said, hold on, because I can show y'all's comments. Andrea says, CNN has been ratchet since Don Lemon got drunk as hell on New Year's. Yes. CNN has definitely lost a lot of their like professionalism. Um, even when it comes to like talking about the president, it, it's like so catty now when I watch CNN. It's like they just can't wait till 10 o'clock hits. Cuomo's passing, you know, his hour over to Don and they're gossiping like little schoolgirls, like, mm hmm. And then Trump did this and, oh, you know, he didn't pay for his taxes. What? Say what, girl? Uh uh. I'm like, CNN is so ratchet. I'm, <laughs> I'm here for it, but it's ratchet, okay? The, when they when they pass the buck to the next, you know, to the next hour segment, it's just, it's a mess, honey. It's a mess. The way him and, um, Don Lemon be going back and forth. I be dying. Like, what Trump do today? Uh-huh. Well, you know I'm going to hit on that. Don't worry. Uh-huh. I'm going to keep my foot on his neck. I be like, what? Like, is this CNN or fucking Instagram? You know? So it's 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 funny. It's funny. And Fox, too. They're they're messy. You know, this is like a, a level of uh, just unprofessionalism in the news. Like, I, I expect certain things when I turn on television. I, I want a certain level of decorum, Okay. I want to see suits and jackets and people, you know, just being professional. I, I, I don't I don't want to look at Laura Ingram with her titties out. Not interested. Cover them shits up. But maybe on me, on the other hand, on YouTube, you know what I'm saying? It don't matter because it's YouTube. You know, so it's like I just I want a, a certain level of professionalism. And I, I don't get that nowadays. And it starts at the top, like I was saying. So let me go ahead and show you guys two of my favorite clips from last night's debate that went viral. Let me pull up my stream yard here. I had to practice the settings. That's why I had to, I needed that 10 minute delay because I haven't done this in a while. So give me just a second. This was just this was crazy. See, I'll go ahead and watch this. Pull this up here. Okay. The question is, is, is the radical question. left. Would you who is our listen? Who is on your list, Joe? <laughs> this is I mean, like, just the fact, like, they just, they don't care. Let me pull this up and share this screen. So now this is the second half here, the second debate. Okay. Oh, but here's it. With you, ahead, you the the wait a minute. You get the final word. Mr. Well, it's hard to get any word in with this clown. Excuse me. This. Hey, hey this let me person. just say to you. No, no, no. I'm no. Mr. President. Three and a half Mr. million, President. Joe. That is simply Why did he true. deserve three and a half million it, from it, Moscow? Look, here's the deal. We want to talk about families and ethics. I don't want to do that. Okay. So let me come back on the screen here. I mean, it's like. That's stuff that I expect from social media. You know what I'm saying? That's stuff I expect from social media. People calling each other clowns and saying, you know, shut up, shut the hell up. It's like, this is, this was, um, look, somebody said Trump's track was showing. Um, this was a political debate. I hate how fast it moves on here. Cause if I click on somebody's name, I can't click them off. Hold on. Let me try and find their name. Boss lady. So I can click her name off because I accidentally clicked on it. Okay, there we go. All right. So it was just like a level of just like, it was just weird. It felt like a social media debate. That's like me and, you know, a, a random commentator. We're going back and forth and we're shooting the shit and, oh, you a clown. I don't agree with you. But it's like, is this really the presidential debate right now or am I, or am I tripping? Because they were just so lax in the way they were just acting and carrying themselves. It was crazy. It was straight crazy when he said that he was like, he's a clown. And then it was like, all you saw were people on Twitter making all these clown emojis. I'm just like, social media has literally webbed itself into the fabric of America. You know, those are words that you see on social media. That's a meme, you know? So it was, it was crazy. It was a hot mess. I mean, people have been clowning all morning about this debate. They really have. Um, let me read some of these super chats here. Um, Daniel Jade says, just got in, hope I didn't miss much. No, we just started, so welcome. Thank you so much for the super chat. Um, Lala C says, I like how Van broke down his three points about that mess, about the stand back and stand by. Yeah, I thought Van Lathan, I thought he did good. 
you know, I thought he did good kind of, you know, speaking and and he still comes off, you know, very professional. And a lot of the commentators who they bring on on CNN, they tend to be more professional than the damn CNN anchor. So thank you for the super chat. Um, Just T says, yes, T, I love you. Thank you for keeping it 100. The hair is on point as well. Happy I caught a live, got off early today. That's awesome. Thank you so much for the super chat and thank you for coming through. Um, Lena Vargas says, if you need help during the Zooms, I work from home and be ready whenever you are. I love you, wishing you the best. Thank you so much for that. I appreciate it. I'm still trying to learn my ways um, around Zoom. So it was really nice with all the like info and the help that you guys were helping me with yesterday. So I'll definitely keep that in mind. Thank you. Um, let's see here. Marvin D sent 20. He says, hey, T, love the hair looking beautiful as always. Thank you so much, Marvin. Thank you for the super chat. Appreciate you. Um, Evan sent 999. Evan says, Hey, Miss T, been watching you since I was eight. Oh, since I was eight with, with the fertile lady. I'm 16 now. Oh, wow. So you really were eight. Okay. <laughs> I'm 16 now. And I want to thank you for being such a positive influence in my life. Much love. Love you too. And thank you so much for the super chat. Thank you for coming through. I really appreciate it. Um, that's awesome. I feel like I, I literally raised some of y'all, honey, for real, for real. Um, so gifted Candace says, can I have your grip money? No, but thank you for the 499 super chat, sis. I appreciate it. Oh, my Johnson, that, that, that video still tricks me out. I have posted on Instagram and he was basically trying to tell black folks, well, since y'all not going to be supporting, you know, Quaker Oats no more. How about y'all give me the money that y'all would have spent to Quaker Oats to buy grits and oatmeal? Um, first of all, I didn't tell you I wasn't going to buy Quaker Oats no more, but okay, let's just say that I'm not going to buy it. That don't mean I'm about to send you the damn dollar fifty a month. Umar Johnson is a trip, honey. I swear. Thank you so much for the super, uh, for the super chat, sis. Um, Clem Baby O sends $48.99. She's from the UK. Thank you for coming through and thank you for the super chat. Um, Selena Galarado says, love to you, loving the new hair. Glad to see you are doing better. Thank you so much, sis. And thanks for coming through. Um, let's see here. Vic sent 20. He says, hey, T, the Zoom was very crazy yesterday. Don't like Trump. But one of the reasons he won is because he understood that once you control the culture, you control politics. Bindon, try, Bindon is trying to emulate that. Love from Canada. You made some really good points. Thank you so much, Vic. And you're right. Like, you know, he Trump understands social media. You know, he understands people. He, you know, he's basically taking the social media world, that whole, you know, we're kind of renegade here, right? We're rogue. We kind of say what we want to say, do what we want to do within reason, of course, right? It's kind of like the wild, wild west. It was a lot wilder years ago, but it's still kind of like the wild, wild west. There's not as much filtering on social media as there is on CNN or on, you know, television, right? And he's kind of taken that mentality and he's taken it to the White House, you know, like just his actions and the things that he says. And because he's so unfiltered and he just says whatever comes to mind and he doesn't make any apologies for it, a lot of people really respect that. You know, I'm no fan of his, but I can respect the fact that he stands in his shit and he just, he just doesn't care. And unfortunately, that's the attitude that a lot of people have nowadays, you know, so that's why he resonates so much with certain people, you know, and yeah, I believe you when you say that you feel like Joe Budden was trying to, Joe Budden, Lord, honey, I don't call this man Joe Budden, Joe Biden, sorry, Joe Budden. Um, but I do feel like Joe Biden was trying to emulate that with some of the things he was saying and, you know, almost like, oh, well, if I don't win, at least I can be a meme, you know, and it was. People were memeing them both to death yesterday. It was crazy. Yeah, I sure did. I actually caught on Joe Button. Yeah, Trump likes to troll. He definitely gets off on that. He loves to troll. So, um... Let's say I've been on uh, for, oh, we got over 8,000 people in here. That's what's up. Thank you guys. Welcome, welcome. Hit that like button. Um, so I want to go ahead and talk about all this stuff that's going on in pop culture. So let me go ahead and talk about this first. So with the Naya Rivera situation, a lot of things have been rubbing folks the wrong way. So we all know Naya Rivera died back in July. 
and it was like a really controversial death. She drowned. And so recently, um, one of the paparazzis, they caught Ryan, is his name Ryan Dorsey? Let me make sure. Ryan Dorsey, her ex-husband, um, they found out that he moved in with her sister. And Nye Rivera and her sister, they look very similar, but her sister's taller. She's a model, real pretty girl. And so he's moved in with her. And then they were out and about shopping and paparazzi found pictures of them holding hands. So I want to show you guys this because they're both denying it, which makes sense. But I want you guys to, sh I want to show you guys where like this rumor of their alleged affair is coming from. So let me go ahead and pull this up real quick. Okay, so this was reported by the Daily Mail UK. Let me show y'all these pictures. So that's Ryan Dorsey. That is um, Nye Rivera's sister. And, you know, they're going shopping. Okay, cool. You know, cute little Yeezys. We see you, Ryan. But this is what kind of has me like, um, this, mm, this is kind of suspect to me. Okay. And I don't like to assume, you know, things or just kind of throw stuff out there. But why are they holding hands? His hand is not even on the railing. So he can't even say, well, I'm holding the railing and holding her hand so she doesn't fall because her cell phone is over here. You're not even holding the railing. So if you were both to fall, you both fall on your ass. So I kind of thought that was interesting. Also, you know, me looking at stuff. It, it looks like they're holding hands. I don't know. To me, it does. Maybe they're not. It, it looks like they are. Even with that, they're wearing matching socks. <laughs> I, I just read into shit. They're wearing matching socks. I don't know about y'all, but those aren't like just regular white Hanes. You know what I'm saying? Like just, just socks that just, you know, end up like in the pack. I just thought that was very interesting. So here goes another picture. Let me pull this back up. So this is her and her sister. You know, they look very much alike. This is the home. And then there was like a video of him like moving into the home. I don't know. That's just, that's really comfortable. It's kind of comfortable. He's with his shirt off with his sister-in-law. I don't know. I don't know. Families are different. Don't get me wrong. Everybody's different, but mm, I don't know, honey. So. Side eye. Yes, I said matching socks. That's that's the nail in the coffin. Their damn socks match. And those are unique socks. So they got to be messing around. Now, I mean, I'm not saying, you know, one. <laughs> Did y'all just put up the sock emojis? <laughs> um, Glace Water done, done, done put up the, the damn sock emojis. You know, I'm not saying that that's like the, the, uh, the flaming gun. But I think people have the right to be suspicious, you know. And so. She came out and she's she's denouncing it. So I want to read what she said yesterday. And then he put up a whole 11 minute rant. And I posted that on my Instagram page. Honey, that day of rant. It was a bigger snooze fest than Brandy and Monica. I'm like, get to the point. Just say you're not fucking her. That's it. That's all. All this. And, you know, my, my son lost his mom and. And we feel terrible about that. I'm not trying to make light of that. But it's like he kept bringing the son into it. Well, my son wants me to live with his auntie. Really? He just turned five. I don't know, it's, just, it's just weird. I've never had my kids say, I want you to live with your ex-wife, her ex-husband's brother. I'm just saying. So I, I thought his rant was just kind of a little bit all over the place. And really, if there's no... If, if there's nothing going on, why even explain to strangers? He, I can't believe I'm doing this video. I can't believe I'm explaining myself to a bunch of nobodies and, you know, people on the internet. But nobody told you to. Put down the tiny violin and live your life. So I, I wasn't really feeling his rant. It was 11 minutes. I listened to it twice. I got nothing. I got nothing at all. So let me go ahead and read to you guys what she had to say. Y'all pull out the tiny violins for this one too, honey. So this is what the sister had to say after she got confronted. So she says, in the darkest times of my life, the only thing that is important is friends and family. Showing up for my nephew, 
even though I can't show up for myself. I'm not concerned with the way things look because no one can see each other. No one can see each agonizing moment we will endure. What matters most I've learned is to show compassion, not to judge others and never take a moment of life for granted. I hope you all can do the same. <laughs> I love the shade at the end. <laughs> like y'all get the hell up out of here with that shit. So that was a little bit of shade at the end of basically y'all need to do the same thing. Y'all need to quit being so messy, you know, I, I, I. but again, my thing is this, if there's nothing going on, there's really nothing to explain, but that you have to be, you have to be fair that people are, there, there's going to be red flags raised. And what people don't understand is when it comes to like tragic situations, a lot of people connect over tragedies. OK, can we talk about 9-11 real quick without YouTube, you know, messing up the algorithm? A lot of 9-11 widows. Remember, you had whole fire departments full of widows because all the husbands were killed. So a lot of the surviving firefighters went to comfort these widows wives. And they ended up getting married to them, dating them. You know, because grief can bring people together. And I'm I'm in no way saying that, you know, this is like proof that they're messing around. I'm, I'm in no way saying that. But what I'm saying is that, you know, grief can bring people together. Period. You know, and they're not beyond that. She's a beautiful woman. Ryan Dorsey is handsome. And my thing is, if y'all weren't living together while Naya was here, I, I just find it strange. And another thing, has anybody asked, where are the grandparents? Like, I understand wanting help, but where are the grandparents? It, it'd make more sense if he moved in with the grandparents, the mother and the father of Naya Rivera before the sister. That would make more sense to me. So, yeah, it's, it's just, I, I think people have the right. Yeah, trauma bonding. Thank you, uh, Lisa Dale. That's what it's called, trauma bonding, where people bond together during tragic events, you know, and maybe they haven't you know, done anything physically, you know, I would hope not, but just that emotional bonding and it might help them. But I, I don't know. I just, you know, Hollywood is weird. Hollywood is a strange place. People have a right to question like, hold on now. She ain't been dead, you know, a few months and you done packed up all your shit and moved in with the sister. What's going on? And then, like I said, his explanation was so, you know, and then she, you know, I, and then when people try to make statements and try, you know, throw it back at the people like y'all need to do the same and quit judging and quit. Well, we wouldn't have judged if paparazzi wasn't popping up with all these pictures every other damn day. Y'all the one walking through Target, you know, hand in hand with matching socks. <laughs> Shit, we just sip the tea. Confused. I don't know. Damn. Anyways. Yeah. Thank you. I'm glad y'all see where I'm coming from. The mom and dad are still alive. He was swimming with the daddy the other day. They went to go swim at the at the lake, which I find strange. But yeah, they went to Lake Pyru to go swimming together. So why aren't you moving with the daddy? Y'all swimming together in the damn lake that, you know, that that drought Naya. It's just weird. And I had the right to question weird shit. <laughs> Let me go ahead and pull up my um Instagram. I'm going to just play y'all a snippet because when I, this was a this snooze fest, I was I not am. impressed, honey. I was tired. I was like, oh, shit, he ain't done yet. Oh. Oh, okay. So, well, what was the point of this this eleven minute rant, sir? Let me go ahead and play this. Give me just a second. Pull it up on the screen. Right, here's his rant. I'm about to even um, address any of this nonsense. I haven't really read the news or social media in months. Sometime in July. Um. I usually don't read comments on my own stuff because, uh, you know, I just know how there can be 50 good things said and five negative ones. And somehow as humans, we uh, somehow get those five negative ones um, stuck in our heads and wondering how people could say certain things. Uh, it was brought to my attention that there's a lot of people that have a... Um, a lot to say and uh, have opinions on a family's tragic situation. 99% of strangers that don't even know this family. And I'll be honest, I probably read about 10 and that was enough to know. That is why I don't read comments. Um, 
you know, there's people making judgments, um, they're making assumptions, they're sending um, terrible messages, wishing death upon strangers that they truly know. Ain't nobody doing that shit. About. Get off my screen. Get, ain't nobody doing all that, sir. Stop. Oh, people are wishing us death. Oh, we're being harassed. I don't read comments, but yet you're making a video. So you get what I'm saying? Like, sir, if you, we, we are y'all fucking or not? That that was <laughs> just get to the sauce. No, I'm not sleeping with her. I moved in because of this, this, and that. I don't like when people start their stuff trying to trying to shame the public. Like I said, we and and the thing is, who's gonna send y'all death threats? We feel bad for y'all. You lost your baby's mother, your ex-wife. She lost a sister. I would hope nobody's sick enough to be sending them death threats, but people will be asking you questions like, hey, what's up with this? Y'all smashing or not? Nah? Y'all are wearing matching socks. Are you dating the sister? Those were the questions I was mainly seeing people. But of course, they, they got to make it. Oh, they got to add sauce. Oh, we're being threatened. By who? Even if y'all did get together, what the hell can the internet do about it? That's, y'all, that's on y'all. Anyways, y'all heard how melancholy and dry he spoke. He spoke like that the whole 11 minutes. I'm like, is this man going to get to the point? Somewhere in the middle, I need timestamp because it was so boring, is when he decided to talk about the little boy and supposedly this suggestion of him moving in with the sister came from the son. I'm just not buying it. I'm not buying it. Little kids will say stuff like, oh, yeah, I want to see my TT or I want to see auntie. They'll say that, but I, I don't see a four-year-old who just turned five saying, hey, dad, I not only want to see TT, but I want you to move in with her. We need to be around her 24-7. He ain't say that shit, sir. Stop putting words in that child's mouth. <laughs> okay, let me stop being messy, okay? I don't want to come off as heartless, but I just I just see through bullshit. Y'all know when I see through bullshit, I just, you know, I, I, I tune out. You can't, you can't move me with fake tattoo tears and trying to shame the public. And we're just asking questions. We're minding our own damn business, okay? These pictures fell in our lap. Shit. We trying to focus on the presidential debate. And every day the media's talking about, here goes some new pictures of Ryan and, you know, Naya's sister. That's it, that's all. We're just curious. We don't wish y'all death. We want you to, you know, we want both of y'all to be able to mourn in peace and, you know, do what you guys need to do as a family. But also don't bullshit us either. <laughs> yeah, I think people have the right. Everybody still laughing about the matching socks. <laughs> That's the damn smoking gun. Look at their socks. <laughs> you know, social media. That's how people connect shit. You know what I mean? So, <laughs> so I mean, like I said, his story was just, it was just too much. You know, oh, what was me? The internet is bullying me. Everybody, you know, I don't read comments. But yet and still, you, you're you seeing all these comments of people threatening you. I thought you just said you don't read comments. Which one is it? <laughs> yeah, so that whole story is a trip. You know, it's definitely a trip. But, you know, I, I wish him and and the sister you know the best the main important thing is the boy and i hope the little boy you know gets a lot of love and you know people just really supporting him i hope he gets to go to some type of counseling you know because he was there he watched his mother not be able to get back on that boat so i'm sure he's going through a lot mentally so i i just don't think he should have drugged the little boy into that like just own up and just say you know I just want to be around family. I'm just going through a lot, but to be like, oh, well, who's my son? My son asked me to move in with my, you know, my, my fine ass models, you know, ex sister in law. <laughs> like, okay, okay, sir. Look, Angie, uh, uh, Angie, Angie said they're fucking period. Oh lord, y'all are messy. <laughs> Let me read some of these super chats. Um, Kung Fu Moni sent five dollars. Thank you so much for the super chat, sis. Appreciate it. Um, Lisa Arroyo, uh, Arroyo 30 says, listen T, I've watched enough ID channel. Okay, sis. Um, to know that this situation seems fishy. The way 2020 is set up, I wouldn't be surprised if they had, you know, and I'm the same way. You know, I, I live for the ID channel, honey. That's why I'd be scared to, you know, go out on blind dates now because you know, people are crazy and shit via the ID channel. Yeah. And that's how I'm saying Like we, we, you know, we, we've seen this, like we're not, we're not even judging you. Like this is normal, like we called it earlier, it's trauma bonding. So it's not even like really judging you or trying to make you feel bad, but just you, you're not gonna judge me for judging you. Fuck out of here with that shit. We have the right to question. 
you know, but if y'all want to bond over trauma, it happens all the time. You know, how many people in the hood, you know, her baby daddy done got shot and killed and his best friend, they're crying and reminiscing over the baby daddy who done got shot and killed. And then next, you know, they're, they're hooking up or they're dating now, you know, so it happens all the time. So it's not, it's not too far fetched for people to come to that conclusion. And I don't think it makes people bad for coming to that conclusion because it happens in everyday normal life, you know? So let me see here. May Ray or Stario or Mia, it might be Mia. Um, says, T, did you see the picture of the president's <laughs> loose track? Some people claimed it was a microchip. I think his tracks were slipping. I did see that picture. Hot mess, honey. You know, they let it get on black women by wearing wigs, but I keep trying to tell people other races probably wear more wigs, pieces than even black folks. Okay. Our president got tracks in his hair. <laughs> MJ Cobb says, hey, T, can you tell me to do my homework? I need this work done and I'm trying to focus, but I love your lives. Much love and why. Thank you so much for the super chat. Make sure you do your homework after this stream, okay? Your homework comes first in my mom voice, okay? You, you enjoy this little stream for the next hour, hour and a half, but after that, get back to them damn books. Thanks for coming through. I appreciate it. Um, let's see here. Lawrence Coleman says, thank you for this take auntie i appreciate it thank you thank you so much but yeah it sounds like a, a lifetime movie in the making honey anything is possible look somebody wrote y'all's president y'all gonna stop doing that talking about some damn y'all's president he's everybody's president like it or not he ain't just mine he's yours too <laughs> people love writing that that ain't my president that's your president no actually he's all of ours everything he does affects us you know like it or not <laughs> Three dollar wig from Walgreens. Sam five. She says, in the words of Effie from Dream Girls, "You sleeping with her, Curtis, and everybody knows it." Cue the overdramatic black and white filter. <laughs> that is the truth. Yeah, that's how. And notice his um his video was in black and white, trying to be dramatic, trying to invoke sympathy. This ain't the damn nineteen thirties. Where's the color? Yeah, he was definitely doing some stuff. Um, is this ex colic Clover says super messy. In my opinion, can you imagine if they had two together? That's a Mori episode. Yeah, it is messy. Trust me, it's messy, but it happens all the time, you know. And I think that's why they're trying to herp and squash the rumors because they, they probably have, you know, got a little bit too close. You know, maybe got the second base or some shit. I don't know. You know I'm just saying, I don't know. So yeah, so that that's that was the the drama going on with the whole Naya Rivera situation. So now I want to get on to this Wendy Williams drama with Wendy Williams and Nene Leakes. And I've been saying this for a while. With friends like this, who needs enemies? You know, they keep wanting to use that word friend, but they both throw enough shade at each other where I, I don't really think that y'all are really friends like that. Um, so this is how everything first started. Let me go ahead and pull up my video. Messy Andy Cohen. You know, I call him a messy bottom, honey. Very messy, messier than a damn BK burger. He keeps shit going. But um, he decided to ask Wendy Williams questions about Nene Leakes. And Wendy Williams kept that shit real. Sorry, she did. I don't think there were too many lies told. Let me go ahead and um pull this up here. I got to remove this and pull up another thing. Okay. All right. So y'all go ahead and listen to this. Wendy, um, going back a little bit to the beginning of the pandemic, we shot the big Atlanta reunion. We spent a, a lot of time. I spent a lot of time kind of torturing Nene about her friendship with you and the other women had really strong opinions about your friendship. What was your reaction to that conversation? Well, a lot of people have said uh, that Nini is using me to, um, to I don't know, for social media or whatever Nini would use somebody for. And I didn't consider it a usation. I've never been to Atlanta to see Nini. Nini likes to stay out of the house. 
So Nini flies to New York. And if she's here and I have time, I see Nini. If I don't have time, I let her know. Nini, I'm busy. Um, so I don't, I, I don't listen to that. I know who Lanethia is. And it's something deep in the heart. Nini is my friend. And I know her as Lanethia. I don't know her as this person on reality TV. Just what I watch, you know. But um, I believe, and I told you this also... Um, I believe that this is not a truth. Uh, Nini has quit the show several times and you'll have her back. And Nini likes attention, dramatic attention. Uh, I don't know what Nini's going to be doing for money. I'm not trying to count coins, but you know, the housewives is that one thing that all the girls use to promote their other stuff. And while Nini is as famous uh, as Bethany, Bethany has turned it into a legitimate multi-million dollar situation. Do you know what I mean, Andy? Um, yeah, it's a it's a great driver for um, it's a great driver for promotion, and it's a it's a great place to be known and be out there. All right, y'all. So you guys Wendy, uh, yeah, I just heard that. So give me just a second. Come back on the screen here. Okay. So I see we got over 11,000 people in here sipping slow, honey, and at least like 500 people watching on Facebook. Please make sure y'all hit that like button. It don't cost nothing. If I'm entertaining you right now, you in the bathroom at work, sneaking, trying to sip, you know what I mean? Hit the like button. It's free. So anyways, um, with this whole Nene thing, so that's how everything started with, with you know, Andy Cohen being messy, bringing up her name. And I just don't feel like they have a genuine friendship. I just, I've, I've said that for a while now, but she's not lying when she says that Nene does do stuff in an overdramatic fashion. She likes to play victim and that with her being an OG, she should be a lot further in her brand where she really doesn't, she really shouldn't even need the Real Housewives of Atlanta, you know, cause like Bethany, she's been able to be a multimillionaire, you know, with that. She works stuff in her contract, like, because, you know, a lot of people don't realize this, a lot of these reality TV shows, they do 360 deals. I didn't know this until one of my friends in the industry was telling me. They do 360 deals just like the um, the record labels. And those 360 deals came about because of Bethany Franco. Because she used her platform on television to start that skinny girl martini line and liquor line and, you know, all types of stuff. So she was able to really brand herself. Bethany is a true businesswoman. She even had her own talk show at one point in time. So because she made all of this money from Bravo and didn't have to pay them anything, they don't get no residuals off of it. You know, they just got the footage that they filmed from her. They've not made it a clause in the contract that if you do anything where Bravo has to come and film and they're promoting your product, they get a cut of that. So that was put in place behind Bethany. So, um, so I think for a lot of the women, you know, it's harder and there's certain things that they'll promote and they won't if they're not going to receive any type of check from it. Because remember, they used to follow Candy around when she did her like bedroom candy parties and stuff like that. But once they realized they wouldn't get no money from it, they stopped. So now if you want certain things promoted, like when um, Marlo was doing like her little hair thing and that was part of the season, trust and believe they got an extra check for that. So I do feel like, yes, yeah, she should be a lot further but like like people are saying there's also white privilege there's also where people are going to support a bethany and some of those other ogs a little bit more than even the nini because let's keep it real Teresa should not have had the comeback that she's had period y'all and i'm a big fan of the real housewives of new jersey i've been watching from day one i watched from the time Teresa was flipping over that damn when she was flat chest ain't had no damn titties and she picked up that fucking table so ah, prostitution whore! i'm an og of these shows bitch you can't honey i was here from day one remember Teresa ain't had no damn titties she went and got her breast implants like a few seasons in and she picked up that damn table was shaking it and shit prostitution whore <laughs> That never gets old to me. So I'm talking about I've been watching the show, watched her do all that fuck shit with Juicy. You know what I'm saying? Her husband, Joe Judice, you know, Juicy Joe. And, and then they went to prison. And, you know, they even got they even got that was like a benefit. 
Because remember, they got to do their prison sentences at different times so that way their kids weren't affected. But if that was just my black ass and my black ass, you know, boo, we both were getting locked up. Kids would be in foster care. So yeah, there's definitely a privilege, okay? Oh yeah, she was the hawk that season, honey. Teresa was flipping tables and trying to whoop ass. Okay, so Teresa was just, you know, so yeah, Nene's hood. Nene can be annoying, but she ain't done nothing. Them, them other housewives, they've gotten very physical. The Real Housewives of Atlanta, they might be petty. They might do stupid shit like Phaedra, you know, time, you know, just spreading lies about Candy, time about Candy try to, you know, date our somebody. You know, uh, Cynthia might kick somebody in their stomach, you know, by accident. But the Real Housewives of New Jersey, oh, they was on some ratchet mafia shit. Remember Caroline Manzo? That bitch thought she was like the damn mafia princess. Don't nobody mess with the Manzos. She thought she was running the show. So, I mean, the, the, a lot of the other housewives are very ratchet, but they've been able to be elevated and put on a pedestal and, you know, revamp their image. Now, Teresa's, you know, oh, she's moving on with her life and, you know, life after prison with Teresa, all these little spinoff shows and and everything else. So I can understand Nene feeling some type of way. But Nene also needs to understand that her attitude is why a lot of people don't care. Because there was a point in time when she was, I'm rich and I be, I cash Trump checks. And she started to think that she was bigger than the show. Remember, she went and got into acting. She was on Glee for a while. She was doing, you know, the new normal. And she kept making herself seem like she was better than the other women on the show. And then when all that, when Hollywood didn't pan out for her, then it's like you have to come back and kind of be humble towards other women. And now you want to be cool and, oh, you know, let's all, you know, kick it in and try and make amends. But you left a lot of hurt feelings when you just departed. And then it's like she almost had to, like, come crawling back, you know. So that's why a lot of people, they just they don't have as much sympathy. So anyways, Nene responded to the situation. But, yeah, people forget. I'm glad y'all remember the Real Housewives of New Jersey, they are ratchet, okay? There's been hella fun. Remember, matter of fact, uh, Jacqueline's daughter, let's, let's bring it back. Remember when Ashley, at the time, Ashley was 19 years old when she pulled Daniel Stobbs' hair? That's a grown woman. And she was like, love and light, bitch, and pulled her hair when they was leaving the damn cocktail party. Uh -huh. She couldn't have pulled my wig. I'd have beat the brakes out that 19-year-old. Bitch, I'm old enough to be your mama. Don't you ever put your hands on me. But Danielle's a good one. She was like, oh, I'm suing. I was out of beat the brakes off of Ashley. <laughs> so I'm, that's what I'm saying. Like the, the Real Housewives of New Jersey, hood as hell. Always putting their hands on each other. But I was here for it, though. That, that's my damn, that's my show all day. I love the Real Housewives of New Jersey. I like all of them. Even Teresa. I like Teresa. Glad she's back. But let me go ahead and... um. <laughs> read to y'all what Nene had to say. Honey, she wrote a whole book. So this was her response to, to um, Andy Cohen and Wendy Williams. Let me go ahead and pull this up really quick here. I'm glad I'm getting back in the swing of everything, honey. Okay. So Nene says, both are, hold on, both are effing their ratings. Oh, both their effing ratings are low by Queens. Then she says she's on cocaine, so they should stop using her to talk. They both need my help with their poor ratings. Okay, that's a reach, Nene. Um, let's see here. She says, keep trying me, sir, and I'm going to let the world know who you really are. Then she says, I will always eat and eat good. Believe that. I have always believed in multiple streams of income. So the leaks are good. You owe cocaine head. You owe racist. You, hold on, no one knew you until you knew me. Remember, I'm icon. Don't forget. Then she says, always manipulating black women to say negative things about each other while they sit and enjoy us tearing each other down. Remember, hashtag Black Lives Matter. Remember, Breonna Taylor. Remember, the most racist network. See, that? that's that gaslighting shit that people been doing all season. I, well, why did I just call 2020 a season, honey? All 2020, that's just been irritating me. But let me keep reading. Um, They're going to leave my name out of these shows. Send me your best discrimination attorney. Info to book Nini at Gmail. It's war. The racist is the master manipulator. 
they using me for ratings like they've always done. We strictly talking the OGs. I was the only black OG. My white counterparts were elevated and given full seasons every season. Each season I was given less and less. Don't ask me, ask Andy and ask at Bravo, ask them why. So she shows like Kyle Richards, Ramona Singer, um, how they're there every episode, Teresa Judice. Now, you know damn well Teresa went to jail for three years and she wasn't there for every episode, Nene. Stop the foolishness and the lies, ma'am. <laughs> Bishy says, so much, you guys just don't know. I'm going to bed now. This is systemic racism. The systemic racism is greater than you will ever know. Okay, let me come back on screen. Okay. First and foremost, I'm, I'm not here for the gaslighting and the BS, okay? Um, like I said, Teresa was locked up for several years. So, no, she was not there every episode, even though she was an OG. Second of all, you know, she's complaining about how she was seen less and less. But again, like I was just saying, you removed yourself off of the show. You came in at a point where you thought you were better than the other women on the show and that you didn't need the show. Y'all remember that reunion when she was telling Andy, do you want me to kiss your ass? And just being really disrespectful. Then she left for like two or three seasons and she wasn't missed. She thought leaving was going to make people be like, oh my God, where's Nene? Where's Nene? But what it did is it elevated people like Kenya Moore and others into that spotlight. They filled that void once Nene left. It elevated Candy into becoming more of a favorite and an OG. You know, so, and I think that really bothers her. Now, the thing I don't like is now, like I said, it, it's a lot of gaslighting in 2020. Not just her. Jeffree Star did the same thing. You know, Trish Paytas. E -e -e every time there's a racial topic, here comes Breonna Taylor's name. Elijah McClain. Y'all didn't even know this man before he went viral. Now nobody can stop talking about him. You know, and it's like now we're talking about systematic racism and, uh, you know, oppression. But when the checks were rolling in, I never heard those words. So again, this is why we have to be careful with what we tie our brand to and our energy to, because you can't be tied to something for years, okay? Remember, I keep the same energy with everybody. I don't care if I know them or not personally. These are just my opinions. I helped Lord Jamar, remember, some of you fellas got mad and I didn't give a fuck, okay? You go to his page. But I held Lord Jamar to the same standard I'm holding Nene to. You can't complain about the white man and now he's a devil. But Lord Jamar, you sat on his platform for seven years. You know, you was getting paid an exposure. Let's keep it real because Vlad don't cut no checks. You sat there for seven years getting paid an exposure and getting famous. OK, because a lot of people, including myself, I, I, I don't know his group. OK, and I don't know if you got mad about that. You should know brand Nubian. You're old enough. It don't matter. I, I don't know them. I'd never listened to the music. I didn't know the group until he sat on Vlad's stage, okay? That's just, I don't know every damn group from the damn 90s. I listened to Wu-Tang. That was my damn rap group, okay? So I didn't know them. But like I said, I'm keeping the same energy. So you got paid an exposure, but now all of a sudden, you know, if black people don't stand behind you, you know, we're, we're, we're not on the same accord. And, you know, how dare we not support these black men who are trying to break away from Vlad? No, I'm not interested. You break away, but that doesn't mean that I'm like I'm disloyal to my race because I'm not feeding into your bullshit. And that's the same way I feel with the whole Nene situation is that now it's systemic racism. Andy's a racist. Oh, they manipulate if y'all only knew. But you sat on the show for 10 seasons. Put a teacup if y'all remember me blasting Andy. I've probably been one of the few people who've like blasted him and the shit he's done. Remember when that fight went down between Kenya Moore and Portia? Andy was instigating that shit. And I called out Andy. Like you were the instigator of that. You got these black women on stage fighting and carrying on when it wouldn't have went that far. Good. Thank you. Thank you for the teacups. So that's what I'm saying. I've been calling him out. I've been talking about how he plays these black women against each other. But when they do the white girl reunions, like the Real Housewives of New York and, the, and, and uh, New Jersey, he's not as messy. There's a certain couth. I've never seen them fighting on stage like that. Well, the one time Teresa did, you know, fling his ass like a damn sack of cherries and moved him out the way. But other than that, it's usually really mellow. So I've been calling out Andy. So I just find it very funny now that all of a sudden, and I've been calling out Vlad. 
But now all of a sudden, these same people who benefited on these people's platforms have come to some type of awakening. So I just find that very disingenuous, you know what I'm saying? And especially when you're trying to make it look like, you know, if black people don't stand behind this, you're wrong. No. Well, at least with Nene, she was paid by Andy. The other ones, should, they should, should just be embarrassed that y'all sat there for that long without even getting a check. And now y'all are upset. At least she was paid and compensated. You know, but that's just how I feel about the situation. I just don't like the whole, you know, Black Lives Matter, Breonna Taylor, Jennifer Williams did the same thing when her and Tammy got into it. You know, it's like, okay, even if you don't find the joke funny or distasteful, like, let, let's stop with the whole, you know, Black women need to be amongst Black women. Well, no, if people want to call you out, regardless of your gender or race, people have the right to call you out if you're on some goofy shit, you know? So I don't know. I just, I just, I'm tired of the 2020 gaslighting, and I'm seeing that a lot. I'm seeing that a lot. Let me see here. Um, Chantel Lowe sends $50. Thank you so much for the super chat. Says, hey, Auntie, it's been a minute since I've been on here, but I'm happy to be back and I'm happy you're feeling better. Love you. You look extra gorgeous today. Thank you so much, sis. And thank you so much for the super chat. I really appreciate it. I'm glad you're able to join me today. Um, let's see here. Night God. What's up, Brandon? Says, hey, T, yes, Nene needs to humble herself. Because the same ones you see on your way up, huh, you better let them know, honey, that's the Southern saying, are the same ones you see on your way down. Be careful how you treat people because karma is real. Love you, TT. Love you too. And thank you so much for the super chat. And that's the that's the, the cold, hard facts. You know, when she thought she was going to be mainstream, you know, she really looked down on that network and, you know, on Andy and the girls. And so when she decided to come back, they really didn't welcome, welcome her with open arms. You know, because by then these girls have formed their own cliques and they were, you know, genuine friends. And, you know, Portia was like one of the, the favorites on the show as well. So, yeah, it's been a lot. M. Moo says, if Vicky can be fired, then why can't Nene? Vicky's from the original. You better tell it. Remember, Vicky thought she was another OG who thought she could tie down to the cast and, you know, not show up for filming and, you know, have a diva attitude. And she's an all white woman. She was there from day one. And they booted her ass smooth off. And guess what? The show kept going. See, a lot of people think that once, you know, they're they're like a part of something like we like another Southern saying one monkey don't stop the show. Put a teacup if you ever heard that one monkey does not stop the show. You know, what I'm saying a lot of people have this mentality that, oh, if I leave, everything's going to crumble. Absolutely not. And I think that that's what Nene thought when she initially left, that the show was going to fall off. And it didn't. Like I said, all it did was elevate Kenya and, and Portia and Cynthia and the other women, you know, and, and it, it kind of lessened the drama and the tension. So, yeah, one monkey doesn't stop the show. And that's what Vicky thought, too. And they're like, no, we'll just, you know, scoot you on out of here and bring in somebody else. And it's been working just fine. So... Yeah, it's, it's really interesting how everything is going on now and not everybody's so woke. Now, shout out to all 13,000 people in here. Please you hit the like button. If you feel like I'm speaking the truth right now and I'm preaching to the choir, hit that like. It don't cost nothing. Uh, let's see. Uh, Miss Nibby, uh, Nibri, 28, sends $15. Thank you for the super chat. Says, hey, team. Love talking to you yesterday on Zoom. I'm Nene Banks, the veteran that talked about spazzing at the VA hospital. Did you hear about Jeffree Star and his man breaking up? Wait, wait, wait. Hold on, Nene. You breaking some news to me because you're not been under the damn weather trying to get better. Okay. I didn't know. So you mean to tell me the black man that Jeffree Star had crawling around the, the that Jeffree Star was crawling on the kitchen for? Let me pull up my damn Instagram. Hold up. It ain't been that damn long. I posted right before I went to the hospital. What? Wait, hold up. Well, maybe it's not breaking news. Y'all know I'm late, so forgive me. Remember my caption? Let me pull this up. Because y'all put y'all are playing too much. Okay. I posted this on Instagram right before I went to the hospital. Jeffrey Star was allowing himself to be used as a step stool. You see his, his boo, well, I guess his ex-boo now, got his feet laid up on Jeffrey. Jeffrey's on all four. So this is what I wrote. This is my caption. 
I said that black DL peen must be very sensational. This fool got Jeffrey Star on all fours, willing to be his footstool. Now here goes a close-up picture of them. So you mean to tell me him? He's gone already. It ain't even been a month. Wow. And then I wrote this. He's never going back to Coochie after the, <laughs> after his Royal King of Zamunda treatment. His baby mama can kiss that reconciliation goodbye. Damn. So him and Jeffrey are no longer together. That sh shit out of me. I wasn't expecting that news. Y'all come out here and break all types of tea. Mm. So that lets me know right there was a publicity stunt. Remember Jeffree Star was trying to shame people. Oh, y'all just don't want to see me happy. You know, y'all are racist. Yeah, you know, now we're racist. Um, no, we just see that you're full of shit. And the fact that he's gone. And, and that just lets me know that some of these dudes are so trifling. You were literally letting bony ass Jeffree Star bust your back wide open for some trinkets. You thought you was about to be with him for the next 10 years. You thought you was about to be the next, uh, the next damn Nathan. But I told you the shit was superficial. Remember the live stream? When he talked about that black man, he didn't say he makes me feel like a, you know, like a princess boy. He makes me feel warm and fuzzy. He makes me feel like I've never felt before. He was like, shit, you know, yeah, the sex is good. Huh, we're, we're just getting to know each other. It was like really sexual. I said, this is just like so Jeffrey started on them, basically blasted you to the world because you were on the DL. He done got you blasted to the world. Everybody knows your business. You done fucked up the relationship with your baby's mother. She's never going to ever give you some again, ever, um, ever. Um, so, yeah, you really messed up a lot of stuff. And any woman that's even I don't know, I just wouldn't be interested personally. But, you know, there's there's thirsty women out here who will still get with him. But you basically put all your shit out there. Only to be Jeffree Star's bust down for not even a month. I just posted that shit not even two weeks ago. You should be have moved into the damn mansion by now. So who's Jeffree Star fucking now? <laughs> who's his new boo? Shit. You know somebody who's straight because he don't like gay men, which is just funny. I wonder who now. So he did all that and Jeffree Star and dropped him like he, he got that good big peen and was like, okay, next case. <laughs> next case. <laughs> oh, dude, you just embarrassed yourself. Oh my gosh. She Nene done came through with some breaking news. Thank you, sis. Um, let's see here. Luna Galaxy sent 1499. She says, been MIA for a while, sending love. Thank you so much for coming through, Luna. I appreciate it. Thank you. Oh, my God. I wasn't expecting that news, honey, at all. So is Jeffrey single or who is he messing with now? That's the real tea. Mm-mm-mm. Yeah, he, okay, that, y'all just took me off my train of thought and everything. Okay, so now going back to the whole NeNe situation. So after NeNe went off and, um, you know, was talking about Wendy being a cokehead and all this other stuff, Medina, is that her name? Medina Molina? Oh, God. She's from Grown Up Hip Hop ATL. Is it the ATL version? I think, no, New York, New York, excuse me. The New York version. And I watched this season, and she was the one that hung around, um, is that Kid Capri, the DJ? He has that real pretty daughter. She was hanging on to her like white on rice, honey. You can tell she probably hangs with the young girl, you know, she can get young peen. That was a vibe I was getting from her. She was like the auntie who still wants to, you know, mess with boys in their 20s. So I'm going to hang with this young 20-year-old so that way I can get some residual peen. That was the vibe I got from Medina. Because was she trying to get some from ODB's son? Or whose son was that that went on a date with her during the show? ODB's son was a trip. He was just, oh, he was all over the place. He just wanted to get everybody pregnant. You know, just uh, just the living embodiment of his father, honey. I forgot. Was it his? Was it ODB's son that took her on the date and he had like he wanted to mess with her? Yeah, she has a son by case. I did hear that. Oh, Flavor Flav's son. Oh, okay, okay. It was Flavor Flav and Flavor Flav's son, the little chocolate one? He's very handsome. He looks like Flav, but better. Very handsome young man. The little light skinned son he got. I think it was his teeth or something. Everybody kept clowning on the internet. He didn't look like Flavor Flav, though. And then I remember she had, they had that crazy-ass sister. She was funny. So, yeah, it was, it was, I don't know. Okay, well, yep, it was Flavor Flav, son. I remember that. 
honey. Anyways, Medina wants attention again. So Medina basically is going off. She's blasting Nini. And she's also saying that Nini was cheating on uh, Greg and allowed French Montana to, you know what I'm saying, touch on her fruit snacks. <laughs> I'm trying not to be vulgar because of the algorithm. They said French Montana was touching on her damn fruit snacks, honey. Medina's a trip. But Medina's not lying. She is very close to Wendy Williams. And Nene has hung out with her and Wendy. So she's not, you know, even if a lot of people don't know her from being with Wendy, she's very close. She's been in the industry for like years. Um, I know she's really good friends with, with Mary J. Blige and, you know, me, you know, Misa Brim, Puffy's baby mama, the one that was cussing everybody out on Instagram when we accused her of, you know, sleeping with Puffy at the age of 16 and having Justin. And, you know, she got the crying and cussing folks out and blocking people. I don't think she blocked me, though, but, you know, <laughs> that shit was funny. He did not sleep with me when I was 16. Y'all stop spreading rumors. <laughs> Y'all was fucking with, my, uh, with Misa for like a whole two weeks during that damn R. Kelly thing. Everybody wanted everybody outed. We was like, nah, we're not just going to throw R. Kelly under the bus. All y'all are getting outed. So let me go ahead and pull this picture up really quick so y'all can see this. Give me just a moment. So this is a picture of Medina, Rick Ross, Wendy Williams, and Nene Leakes. So Nene clearly knows Medina, okay? Medina is very good friends with Wendy Williams for people who don't know or who don't believe it. So let me go ahead and play you guys what Medina took to Instagram to say today. She did a five minute rant. I'm not gonna play that, we ain't got time. Um, but I'm gonna play her one minute rant. So y'all can hear okay, that. Hold on real quick. Let me pull that up. You know, Medina crazy, I mean, she ready to go off. Okay. We're going to stop with these lies. We're going to stop with these games. Why don't you start telling the truth? First of all, you snuck your way back into Wendy's life. You tricked me. Y'all asked me to have a sit down, ask her to come to dinner, which I did. Your thirsty ass flew on the plane the next day. She was like, damn. I, she wasn't even going to go. I was like, you know, she jumped on a flight. She, she's like, she jumped on a flight, thirsty ass. So she comes to the dinner. Why? So you could be mean and evil and try to come back in her life and use her and lie on her? Why don't you start telling the truth? Talking about you an icon. You're a whole bug. She won't even respond to you. I can't believe you have the nerve to say that. But why don't you talk about the part where when we was in a truck, you was letting French touch all on your snatch. That's right. You was all up under French Montana. A whole married woman, Nene. So what I'm going to tell you is this. You better fall all the way back. Keep everybody name at your mouth because if you keep coming for people, guess what's going to happen? It's going to be more stuff aired out, more receipts shown, and I don't think you want that smoke, boo. So fall back. Okay. Oh, Medina is hood, honey. Let me get her off the screen. So y'all heard what Medina had to say. Medina don't play the same way she acts on grown up hip hop is the same way she acts on social media. I remember a few months ago, she was blasting her baby's father case. Said he didn't pay child support, said he was broke. But yeah, that's what uh, Medina had to say. She wasn't here for the foolishness. She wasn't here for what Nene was saying about her friend. And she is very close to Wendy Williams. They have a you know, a solid relationship. That's why I never felt that Nene and Wendy's relationship was ever really real. I think it was a relationship of convenience and them just using each other. You know, bring Nene on the show, get some extra tea about the Real Housewives and, you know, stuff like that. So I think that's what that was. So let me go ahead and um, read these super chats here. Uh, Q sent $20 says, been a tea sipper since 2011. Love how you get all the facts before recklessly putting things out there. I got my mom, my sister, and my sister being tea sippers. We discuss things that you post. Much love from Wimbley, from the Wimbley and Johnson family. Thank you so much, Q. I really appreciate that. And yes, I will always, you know, for me, I'd rather do a video two, three days late where we have more information than trying to be first. You know what I'm saying? Because we see we're first and got a lot of these people. So, nope, not interested in being first. So, thank you so much for that. Um... Ali09 says, yeah, I caught another live. Sending my nine jazz sister love from Lagos. Love you, T. Oh, Eshe, thank you so much. I appreciate it. Thank you. I wonder what time it is right now. It's probably, it's like probably like three o'clock in the morning over there in Lagos. <laughs> so I really appreciate you joining me tonight. I appreciate it. Um, Daphne C sent $10. 
says, I'm glad you're back, sis. Didn't Jaguar say that you'd be the only one that she'd do an interview with? Mm. Jaguar did say that. And matter of fact, one of my bloggers had sent it to me and I posted on Instagram. Let me see if I can find it while I'm on here looking at stuff. Because we're going to get on the Jaguar right situation next. But she did say that. But um, we're going to definitely talk about all that drama that's going on. Give me just a second to see if I can find it. I have so much stuff posted. It's crazy. I've gone too far. Trying to see if I can find it. It's somewhere on my page. If I can't find it, I'm going to just say screw it. I'm kind of scrolling. Yeah, I can't find it. I don't know. It's somewhere. But if you're on my Instagram, you'll be able to see it. I have posted it. But yeah, as far as like the whole, oh, it's 11 p.m. in Lagos. Okay, thank you. Um, as far as like the whole situation with um with Nini, Medina, um, and Wendy, it's going to be very interesting to see how that plays out. I think at this point, they're just not friends and they need to stop trying to fake the funk and all the nice, nasty talk. I think they just need to leave each other where they're at. But as far as like all this systematic abuse and, you know, now Bravo is the most racist, you know, all, all of um, TV networks have a underlying, you know, racial issues and biases and things like that. You know, that that's apparent. But again, you sat there for years on that network. So now it just looks silly when you're trying to scream Black Lives Matter and we all need to stand together against Bravo. No, not really, because there's other black women on Bravo that are still employed. And I would like for them to be able to keep their jobs. You know, I like watching them on the Real Housewives of Atlanta. You know, I like, you know, um, Portia, her storyline, Cynthia, you know, um, I love Tanya, Tanya time. I really like her. So it's like, you know, no, I'm not canceling Bravo. I'm going to keep watching it because there's other people on there that I enjoy, you know, and that's just what it is. So now look, <laughs> y'all are laughing because I'm like, uh, no, not really. <laughs> So, okay, so we can talk about the Jaguar right situation. We got 13,000 people watching. How long have I been on here? I think I've been on here for, oh, an hour and 12 minutes. Damn, time be flying. I don't even be noticing it. Um, let me see. I know I missed a few super chats. Keisha sent a super, Keisha Wilson sent a super sticker. Thank you so much, Keisha. Um, Anastasia sent $3.99. Thank you, sis. I appreciate it. And then Alyssa L says, you make my day. Happy to see you. Love you, T. I love you, too. And thank you so much. I appreciate it. So let me go ahead and pull up um, Jaguar Wright. OK, now somebody had just mentioned that she wanted to interview with me, which was true. But um, I'm still, you know, I'm just watching everything play out. You know, I'm, this isn't an interview channel. Um, and I've been done so wrong in the past from interviews of these so-called celebrities. You know, you interview them and they act funny like they don't want to share your shit like you're, you know, you're beneath them, even though they want to come on your platform and, and use your platform and your audience to help better them. So I'm not I'm not big on interviews anymore, but I thought that was cool that she put me on the same level for the most part as a Wendy Williams, you know what I'm saying? That she would consider me a big enough interview, me, Wendy and Vlad, you know, cause so many people try to discredit my platform and act like my platform is so beneath the other ones because they're more mainstream or, you know, Vlad TV is now a part of the culture. You know, Adam 22 is a part of the culture. Charlemagne the God, you know, Joe Budden, those are names that are always seen as part of moving the culture. And then they act like Lovely T doesn't exist, even though a lot of these same platforms take from Lovely T. And a lot of these people who are now doing commentary, um, I paved the way, period. You know what I'm saying? That's not, that's never to be disputed. Just like for me, who paved the way was like a Philip DeFranco, um, what the buck. You know, those were people who were doing uh, Philip DeFranco, not so much, but what the buck was definitely doing celebrity news way back in like 2009. So, you know, they made commentary cool. So as far as like the yeah, exactly. Somebody said they have no problem watching you, but hate to give props. Exactly. You know, look, Hidden says everybody knows who you are. They do. But the way they act, honey, they act like, you know, they don't know. But I, I hear behind the scenes, people watch, or it's always funny when I go to like an event and be like, oh, you're, you're the girl from YouTube. I'm like, who, you know me? Like, you know, so it's funny, but it's all good. 
So anyhow, Jaguar Wright has been on this whole campaign of exposing people, okay? And so I'm going to play you guys the clips. They might be a little bit long, but I'm going to play you guys two different clips of her speaking. I time stamped this. I know where to stop everything. So we're going to first, we're going to hit on the Mary J. Blige first. We're going to do that one. That's the one I want to play for y'all first. So give me just a second. Make sure I have all my timestamps written down because it's two different parts in the Mary J. Blige thing that I want to make sure we hit on. Okay. Okay. So I'm going to play the video for you guys first. I want you guys to listen to this. Her time on Mary J. Blige. And I'm going to come on and, and play the clips of her talking about Puffy. And then we're going to go ahead and discuss. And I'm, I just have to keep it really real with this whole situation. So y'all go ahead and check this out. Going after Mary. Why ain't nobody asking Mary why she went after me? I was a Mary J. Blige fan, just like all of you. I was in a lot of the studios where a lot of her records were written and recorded. <laughs> Shoot, some of Mary's stuff I heard before she did. Me and Mary J. Blige have the same producer that we work with, Chucky Thompson. Well, she don't work with Chucky no more because I guess Puff told her that she couldn't. You know, Chucky Thompson gave her the best music she ever had and she stopped using him. Even though it's his work that made her famous. See, don't nobody ask those questions. Don't nobody ask why Easy Mo B didn't do more tracks for Mary. Because Puff was in control. P. Diddy, Honeycomb, was in control. Mary J. Blige has turned her back on almost everybody that's ever cared about her, ever loved her. Her and her sister, Latanya, Latoya, whatever the fucking bitch name. They're awful people. Y'all just don't know it. Because see, you believe what their publicist tells you. Why are y'all mad at me? Because you'd rather believe their lies than believe the actual truth. She's a whole gay woman. She been gay ever since her and KC ended it. And everybody knows it. So why is she still in the closet? LGBT, why is she still in the closet? In this day and age, if you are living on the down low, you just wanna be a liar. That's why I came out. I didn't have to come out. And truth is, anybody who really knows me or really paid attention to me should have known I was a bisexual woman. If you didn't know, it's because you didn't want to know. So I came out. I actually had to call a few of my out and proud friends and apologize to them for not owning who I was even with them. See, I had an image to uphold. What image? This is my image. This is me. I'm a person just like y'all. I am real just like y'all. Matter of fact, I'm probably realer than most. Sweeter than most. But how would you know? I guess people don't watch all of the interview when they watch interviews. Yeah, J Diddy is a shepherd for the devil. I'm sorry, I was talking to YouTube. I got a um. Everybody told me he was a shepherd for the devil, and I seen it for myself. Y'all want to know how divisive Sean Combs, Honey Combs is? Go talk to Father MC and ask him how he feels about the the love of his life being being stomped to death, and all Puff wanted to do was keep it quiet so nobody knew that he was responsible because he didn't have the appropriate motherfucking goddamn permits to do half of the shows he was doing at Howard. Just to get by. Just to get by. And he got by. He got, he got all the way to the top. He got by everybody. And what most people don't know is he used Mary J. Blige to compromise a lot of people. Y'all seen all the documentaries? Oh, Mary went out and Mary Mary got all of the rappers, all of the rappers who were taken advantage of. All of the rappers who got very unfair contracts. She she sent them to him. She's no different than a procure for a pedophile. If you'll go out and get a bunch of talented artists and know that you're bringing them 
to a situation that is not going to be advantageous for them. Not only are you um, a betrayer of art, but you're a betrayer of humanity. But then again, she do anything just to get by. Mary J. Blige don't write them songs. Somebody else is getting that check. Mary J. Blige don't produce no records. Somebody else is getting that check. That means Mary only got a few ways to make money. We know she ain't no real singer. So she needs the production to support her, to make her look good. So all she is, is a celebrity. That's all she is. She's not talented, genuinely. She has some kind of, she has a thing. You know what I mean? Like there's that real thing when she's actually being real. Like I'm not gonna lie, I wish she was still getting high. Cause she was honest when she was high. But the second she started trying to convince everybody how happy she was, then she went off into that farce marriage with Kendu. I'm not going to talk about Kendu. There's enough people to talk about Kendu. But I'm going to tell you something. That nigga can do. He can do some things. Because he's managing to get $30,000 a month out of this old bitch. And don't nobody even know why. Even Wendy Williams didn't understand it. Well, she was like, how did this man cheat? And how did it? Because that man didn't cheat. He didn't cheat. He was sleeping with his wife's girlfriend, yo. And I know exactly what that's like because I did that in my first marriage too. I had a girlfriend that I had to share with my ex-husband. And you do it so they won't run and tell everybody that you're gay. Okay, so I'm going to skip to this other part here that I want you guys to hear. Give me just a second here. Mary J. Blige is bought and paid for. Y'all don't know who she is. She's one of the most pathetic. She's more pathetic than, than Moni Love. And Moni Love is pathetic. And Mary and her sister are more pathetic than that. Y'all been in the business 30 years and you're still on a leash. You're on leashes, you dogs. That's why I call all of y'all bitches. Because you're dogs, you want leashes with, 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 with a, a platinum collar with diamond studs. Yeah, the shit is around your fucking neck, yo. If you had any real fucking um huspa, Mary J. Blige, you just become a, a um um a porn star. That that look look at what it did for Mimi Faust. At least you would have been able to keep all the money, all that fucking you done. And you really want to be with women instead? Why don't you make your pussy work for you? Why are you still on a leash, Mary? Why puff? Letting you crank that organ grinder and then dance to the beat. Somebody asked me why I, I, I want to tear down black women. Well, why would I want to let a bitch who does nothing but tear black women down stand? Just because they do this shit in the background doesn't mean it's not happening. Everybody's just mad at me because they never thought that I would have the courage to admit all of my faults in front of the entire world. Okay, y'all. So let me go ahead and stop the video right there. Whoo wee! That was a lot to digest. And I'm, I'm reading the comments as y'all were watching it. Um, people on Facebook are saying stuff um, on YouTube. A lot of people are feeling like she's bitter. You know, the stuff that she's saying is just too much. Um, let me see. If somebody sent a super chat. Dom sent $14.99, says, I had to disagree. Mary J can sing. I've seen her sing live. Um, Mary can sing, but I don't know about the other stuff, though. So... Yeah, that was crazy. That was crazy, the stuff that she was exposing with her. Um, I don't, I can't recall if I've ever heard that Mary J was gay. Just to be honest. But I have heard from a really close friend of mine 
who had worked like on tour, um, you know, like backstage setting up and stuff that she had a really nasty attitude. So I have heard that because he was a huge fan of Mary J, you know, even bought his aunts backstage to, you know, meet her and her attitude was just really nasty. So I have heard that, you know, like I said, but the other stuff, um, I've, I've never heard it. I never heard about people assuming she was gay. They're saying that the little young girl that Ken do supposedly cheated on her with was Mary J. Blige's girlfriend. That's what she's saying. So that was kind of crazy. So let me go ahead now. Let's talk about um, the Puffy situation. Let's see here. Dad is saying, let me say something too, at least three other stories about Diddy. My phone's on the label, identical stories way back in 2000. Okay, so let me go ahead and play this stuff about Puff. Let me go ahead and find that clip here. Make sure I have my timestamp. Now she's in a TV. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know why. Oop, hold up. I was trying to change it so it looked better, but whatever. Let me go ahead and just hit play. Cause I don't know. I, I, I hope I won't be putting her in danger. Um, but she shouldn't have to feel afraid after all of these years, almost 20 years, you know. But uh I had to give her a job. I shouldn't say I had to give her a job. I gave her a job uh working for me so she could find some safety because while she was working at bad boy, cause she was one of the lead counsels for bad boy entertainment. <clears throat> um, she witnessed something. She witnessed something that was disturbing to her, but what was really disturbing to her was the conversation that she had with Diddy after see Christopher Williams. I don't know. I guess he wanted to sign. I don't know what happened, but Puff was supposed to be giving him a demo deal and he gave him a demo deal. And I guess it was supposed to turn into an album deal, which that never happened. Um, but this young woman walked in to get approval on some paperwork. Let's see. Mm -hmm. And uh, when she walked in, the door wasn't locked. So she didn't think twice about just walking in. And when she walked in, she saw uh, Christopher Williams performing fellatio on Puff. Now, from what she said to me, um, it was disturbing because, you know, they didn't stop. She just walked out and she just kept her head down at the office the rest of the day. I believe it was. And I don't think it was at the end of business day that day, but I think it was the following day. He came into her office and was like, yeah, so you came in there. So what? What you going to do? You want to say something? And she was like, oh, no, I, you know, I just... She was like, I just don't understand why you left the door unlocked. If you were in there doing that, why would you leave the door unlocked? He said, I'll do whatever the fuck I want to do in my building. And she's, I just don't know. He was like, it's power. See, I can make a man. He said, if I can make a man suck my dick, I can make people do anything for money. That's what you said, Puff, about Christopher Williams sucking your dick for a demo deal. And you cut him a check. And you chase that young woman out of New York, just like you tried to chase Wendy Williams out of New York. And she came to work for me. And I loved her working for me. And when she was finally cool and could find, you know, <clears throat> a good move to move forward, she did. She was with me for less than six months. But she was a wonderful woman. And she was a brilliant attorney. And she thought she was, she was signing up for the ride of her life. You know, she's going to be, you know, head of legal at Bad Boy Entertainment and be a female. Like, that was a big deal. Until she accidentally walked into her boss's, you know, office and caught him getting hit from um, a movie star. Which he said was done for nothing more than an exercise of power. Because if he can make a man suck his dick, he can make anybody do anything. That's you, Puff. That's you, Honeycomb. That's why I call you Honeycomb. Because you smack so sweet. You chased that woman out of your offices because she saw you being you. And then you threatened to ruin her life. If she ever told anyone. But she did tell someone. She told me. And I've kept her secret all of these years. 
you better not try to do nothing to her either. Because she ain't got nothing to be ashamed of. It's not her fault you a sodomite. She ain't had nothing to do with you being no sodomite. Forcing men to do degrading acts just so you can prove how powerful you are. Take a fucking punch, bitch. Show people how powerful you are. I mean, from the way it sounds, what I'm saying shouldn't hurt you. You've been so cool with it for so long. What was that uh, video you did? I can't even remember who it was with. Was it with Usher or something? And you was in a hotel room and you had a dildo in the bed and everybody was trying to skip past that part. And you just had a dildo in the bed. What was you using it for? Who was you using it on? Was you using it on yourself? Did somebody else use it on you? Why are you doing videos in hotel rooms with dildos and men? Only men present. Because you're a sodomite. That's why. Like, I, I don't know if every man that's had a sexual dealing with you, if it's been consensual, you know, maybe you were holding some bad information over their head or, or, or maybe you had some some bad information on a family. See, that's why I have exposed myself. That's why I have been transparent this entire time, because y'all ain't going to use nothing that I've done against me. I'm going to blow me up. You should you should take a page out of my book. The, the truth will uh, it'll set you free. So yeah, um, Sean Combs, I'm charging you with sodomy. I'm charging you with being a divisive human being who will do anything for a dollar. I'm charging you with ruining multiple careers and with stealing great music away from the public. So you can get rich off of trash. How many fucking great artists have you blocked? How many people have you called and paid money to sign people so that they could shelf them so your projects could go on through? Everybody in your pocket, Puff. Probably because you got one of their secrets. You probably about the only other person in the industry that got more secrets than me. And that's because you know Clive Davis and we all know he has lots of secrets. Clearly he trusts you. He stepped around Andre Harrell and gave you the keys to the kingdom. Andre was in line. But then again, you know, you had it in for Andre because Andre used to make you suck his dick. And Kim Porter had footage of it. I heard a whispering about it in the Kit Kat Club with somebody else. I ain't going to say who. She was in the bathroom. Get high. Talking about how she had you by the balls. And sure enough, two weeks later, she had that brand new Mercedes Benz that Andre Orell paid for. She got you good, Puff. I guess you finally got her back, huh? Right? You're alive and she did. You won. See, what? Oh, wait. All right, let me come back on the screen, honey. Mm. That was a lot. That was a lot to unpack. <laughs> that was a lot of stuff said. Um, now, let me go ahead and say this. Let, let me be very, let me read these super chats. I'm going to get into what I have to say. Um, Aisha Taylor says, hey, T, thank you for helping me become the woman I am today. You have truly shaped my mind for the better. I'm now 23 and I have been watching since I was 15. I could go on and on, but I would DM you instead. Thank you so much for that wonderful message. I really appreciate it. And that makes me feel good to know that I've been able to do something like that, you know, unknowingly. So thank you so much. I really appreciate that. Um, so, yeah, it's it, God, this whole I don't even know where to start with this whole Jaguar right situation. So. One, that was a lot of tea spilled, right? But. Let me say this. There's a difference between spilling tea. And y'all know I'm no Puffy fan. I keep my little foot on Puffy. Anytime there's a Puffy story with him, you know, shitting on artists or not paying what he owes. You know, like, Puffy, have you gave, you know, Mace his publishing yet? Has he seen a check? There's tea like that where we're talking about stuff that's just, you know, more out in the open. We all know he's a shysty businessman when it comes to, you know, not paying artists and and trying to keep people in these ironclad contracts and things like that. And even like the gay rumors that those have been around about Puffy since the 90s, since when Wendy Williams was reporting on it. 
you know, because Wendy Williams was dropping a lot of tea back in the day. So those rumors were not new. The thing with this is with Jaguar, right? This is kind of disturbing because at, at I, I'm watching this and I and I've grown to like her. I didn't know much about her before she started spilling tea and and, you know, talking about her situation. And when she first came on and she was talking about how they did Malik B from the roots wrong and she was blasting the roots. I kind of understood it then. It's like, OK, she was a part of this group. They all came together in Philly and stuff like that. So I kind of understood her being upset and, you know, wanting to keep his memory alive. But since then, with everything and everybody that she's been blasting, I'm sitting here thinking like, well, what is the end game? Because she's blasting Mary J. Blige, Puffy, Moni Love. Um, she said she said some stuff about Beyonce, but nothing like, you know, scandalous like that. But she did blast Matthew Knowles. Um, you know, just a lot of people. And like I said, there's a difference between, you know, simple tea, regular Internet gossip, innuendos. And the things that she's saying, because I only played y'all a snippet. If y'all really go and y'all go and watch like the full hour long video that she's done on both parties, she dropped a lot of information. But what bothers me, and this is me talking to you, Jag, you know, woman to woman, is you had said something about your packing, your moving. And you said, I'm moving to Highland Hills or something like that in Texas. And the community has a lot of police. That stood out to me because you're spilling so much, you know, information. And I believe a lot of the stuff that she's saying is truthful. I know a lot of folks are saying she's bitter and there's definitely a bitter element there. OK, let's keep that real. But I believe a lot of stuff that she's saying is truthful. But then when you're saying things like. Do you get paid for likes? No, likes are free. I don't get paid for likes. The likes help because there's a lot of likes on the video. It 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 helps the YouTube algorithm to bring more people into the stream to say, hey, this video has 5,000 likes and 14,000 people watching. You might want to go check out this stream. So that's why we say hit like. So anyways, back to the story. So with the whole Jag situation, I feel like when she's saying all of this, but then also people are missing. It's the stuff that people are missing. Everybody's here for the tea and here for the, you know, the gossip. I'm looking deeper at the situation. She's saying she has to move. Why are you moving all of a sudden? I thought y'all a few streams ago, y'all was talking about y'all had guns and don't run up and you know you want the smoke. Why are you moving? So that's my thing. It's it's one thing to spill tea, but I, I really want her to be careful. And let me let me just say this. I, I took some damn notes. I remember hearing about the whole Kim supposedly catching P. Diddy in a compromising situation and then Andre Harrell buying her a Mercedes. That's some 90s tea that I've, I've even heard that too. And supposedly, remember before Kim Porter died, one of the rumors is she was going to be writing a tell-all book about Diddy. And then all of a sudden she you know, died mysteriously. To this day, I don't even know what killed her. Oh, yeah, she also blasted Jill Scott, Erica Badu. Yes, thank you, a lot of people. OK, so when she was saying that she was moving and she made the comment, there's a lot of police there. I was kind of like, well, it seems like you might be worried for your sa safety or you're getting some type of threat. One thing that people don't realize is that people like Puff and Jay-Z, they have a long reach, you know, and it's one thing to spill silly tea like, oh, I don't like Puff because, you know, he did the band wrong and that was my group. And I used to watch making the band, you know, as a teenager. It's another thing when you are spilling tea that can get people indicted. If you watch that full stream, she's talking about Puff was procuring young men. There's talks of trafficking. There's talks of non-consensual sex, rape allegations. Our allegations are YouTube. Those are things, there's no statute of limitations to that. Those are things that if, People start taking her seriously. He can get popped for. So at that point, it's not tea. You know, at that point, it's not tea. At that point, you're walking a very thin and dangerous line. And maybe she's about that life. Maybe she doesn't care about the consequences. I'm just saying the vibe I'm getting from all of this. There's a lot of things being told. 
And it seems like everybody's so intrigued by the tea, but they're not really digesting the tea that's being spilled. A lot of the shit that she's saying, there's no statute of limitations. A lot of the people that she's naming, charges can be brought up on. That's all I'm saying is that, you know, you have to be really careful with the moves that you make because Puffy has that type of power where one, his energy, because he's Puff and his name, let's keep it real. How many people have accused Puffy of killing, being behind the killing of Tupac and even Biggie? Like these have been rumors all through the industry since when we were kids. He has the power to touch certain people. Remember, what was the thing that Kanye said on stage, grown ass Kanye, when he was having his so-called mental breakdown? He said, Jay-Z, don't send your killers after me. Why would a grown man say that in, in front of thousands of people in the auditorium to the likes of Jay-Z? Because to know that there are certain people in this industry that wield certain power where, yeah, Jay-Z is not going to come to your doorstep with a, you know, with a gun and roses. But he can send somebody to do damage. And that's what I want her to realize. And that's what I want people to stop egging on. That it's tea, but this is like real serious tea that can get people locked up. Are you ready for those consequences? You know, trafficking, all that stuff. So that that's that's all I'm saying is that that's what people are not looking at. And so that's just some of the stuff I'm taking away from that is that I just hope that she realizes with everything that she's exposing, that she's prepared for whatever consequences come from that, you know, because also there seems to be this whole blackmailing element. I have tapes. I have video on all y'all. While y'all thought I was drinking, I was drunk. I was recording. I was peeping game. So there's like this blackmail element. So at that point, it's not tea to me. It, it's, it's, and, and it, it's really, it's kind of disturbing because like I said, I went from feeling really, really bad like, you know, this woman seemed to have been taken advantage of. She's a beautiful singer. To this day, I don't understand how she can drag on a cigarette and literally still like belt out like just beautiful notes. You know, I was watching her on um, Instagram the other day and I'm just like, OK, she literally took a puff on a cigarette and just like blew the house down. I'm like, how is that possible? I don't smoke and I can't damn sing like that. You know, like she has a beautiful voice, very talented. She says she's written music for a lot of artists. So it went from her kind of telling her truth to where I'm getting disturbed by some of the stuff that she's spilling. You know, the outing, even if Mary J. Blige is, is gay, you know, the outing of Mary. Just, just really strange. So that's why I had to say, what is the end game? What does she want from this? Is she doing this to get attention from the industry to be, you know, possibly to be let back in so that way she can shut the fuck up spilling tea? Because remember, when Charlemagne was with Wendy Williams, if a lot of y'all old school people remember this, they used to drag Puffy. Wendy was always blasting him. Charlemagne used to drag the hell out of Puffy. Then what did Puffy do? He came to the Breakfast Club and gave Charlemagne some bullshit award and, oh, you're doing your thing, and basically buttered him up. And then Charlemagne changed his tune. After damn near 30 years, remember, Puffy went on to the Wendy Williams show. And now Wendy don't talk greasy about Puffy the way she did back then. So certain celebrities have a way of shutting shit down. We don't know what conversations were had behind the scenes when the camera wasn't there. And then also Puffy owns Revolt on YouTube. And I believe why he owns, why he got into owning Revolt and is getting into media is so he can control the narrative. Because if you're under revolt, you can't sit around and talk about Puffy the way I can, or you know, other people who are not under revolt. I don't owe you no type of loyalty, but he can shut shit down. So that's the thing. It's one thing to just kind of spill tea or say, well, this person was an asshole, or you know, this woman was a bitch to me. But then it's another thing when you're spilling tea and you're talking about having tapes and you were talking about trafficking and, and our allegations, that's when it's not tea to me. That's when that kind of, when that type of stuff kind of disturbs my spirit.
because we know the industry is demonic. We know a lot of people do crazy things in the industry. We know people wield their power. We know right now, let's say there's a room of 50 girls, whatever hot rapper, NBA young boy, everybody wants to keep clowning, say he has herpes, but for him to have herpes, he gets a lot of damn cooch and stays knocking people up. So obviously he's not even using no protection. So a lot of these people have that certain it factor that will make people throw all common sense out the window. So we know that already, but it's just something about the way she's spilling it and talking that's real, real disturbing to me. Let me read some of these comments. Um, Cassie L said 999, thank you so much for the super chat, sis. Um, so Kenya uh, Sex says, I went on a date with someone who said they wanted to be just like P. Diddy and I couldn't take them seriously after that. On a side note, I'm glad you're feeling better. Thank you so much for the super chat, sis. Thanks for coming through. Um, Beanie says, you crack me up, T. I love your lives and I watch you even when I don't care about the topic. Thank you so much. I'm glad. I'm glad I can make you laugh and smile. And thanks for supporting, even if you don't even know who the people are that we're talking about. I appreciate it. Um, Rainia Lorena says, I'm late, but I made it. Hey, sis, thank you for coming through. Um, it looks like the people were saying that the, the stream kind of froze. Not the stream, but I think the, the chat box kind of froze. Somebody said the FBI is downloading. <laughs> it's downloading all her videos. Yeah. I mean, it's a lot that's going on. It's a lot of stuff that, you know, that was implied and that was said. You know, like I said, I'm not saying that she's lying about anything specific or, you know, saying that she wasn't, you know, being truthful. But I, I just kind of when I watch people and when I listen, I listen with full ears. So when you're spilling all this tea, supposed tea, because this is more serious than tea. And then you're saying that you're moving. That that kind of raises alarms to me. Um, Tonia. Sample says, T, I've been listening to you as well on a deeper level. I know she has been beefing with MJ Blige for decades. For those old enough to remember, I'm a day one Mary J. Blige fan. However, I believe what's being said. Mm, I didn't know they were beefing. Um, yeah, I didn't know that, but thank you for that, T. So that might play a part in it as well. Um, Sin Kawaii says, T, I just caught your live. And yes, you're absolutely right, Joe Budden has said that he works for Revolt and don't want to get fired talking about Puffy. Oh, wow. I didn't even, I knew he worked for Revolt, but I didn't know he had said that. So yeah. And I believe that that's why a lot of these celebrities are now getting into commentary. I've been saying that for a while. Um, I know Naomi Campbell recently did an interview with Mary J. Blige, which I thought was funny because Mary J. doesn't really interview. She doesn't really do the social media thing. So to see Naomi Campbell interviewing her, and I didn't watch it because I don't fuck with Naomi Campbell. I don't fuck with people who are on Jeffrey Epstein's list who have pictures with him. And, you know, like I said, like her whole aura just disturbs me. So I'm, I'm no fan of Naomi Campbell. I don't give a damn. So I didn't watch it, but I saw it in my recommended. And I was like, oh, now they're interviewing th with each other. Interesting. After Jaguar Wright was just blasting Mary J. Blige. Now she's interviewing with Naomi and they're doing... They're talking about, I don't know, look like the title was like love or relationships or whatever. So I thought that was really interesting. And I feel like that's why a lot of them are now becoming commentators, you know, because remember these supermodels in the 90s when we were growing up, these were the same bitches who said they wouldn't get out of bed for under $10,000 a day. And it's like, well, damn, my mama got to work every day to put food on our table. You know, I'm sorry. My mom wasn't born, you know, six foot one, you know, a size zero. But that was the attitude back then. They had such a, you know, air about themselves. A lot of people back then. I thought it was very interesting um, that, hold on. Somebody said that Naomi, hold on. I'm on Facebook was writing something. Jeffrey Epstein, Puffy, Prince Charles, Bill Clinton are all in the same boat, right? So I, that's why I find very interesting and that's why I've been saying for a while, this is why a lot of these mainstream celebrities are now trying to jump into the commentary game because it's almost like a, a safety for the industry. 
because a Mary J. Blige will feel comfortable going to interview with the Naomi Campbell because they have that rapport. They've known each other for years. They're in the industry. And she knows whatever questions that Naomi's going to ask her, they're going to be superficial surface questions. You know, they might go deep in certain aspects, but it's not going to be anything. Um, it's not going to be any deeper than what Mary will allow right? Everything will be pre-packaged, you know, pre-questions, things that Mary and her publicist can go through. Whereas if she comes on a platform, let's say like mine or somebody else who's not of the industry, I'm going to ask you real questions. Like, you know, rumor, you know, word on the street is, you know, you and can do like, he really didn't cheat. He just left with the, you know, you was fucking her too. And I guess she decided that she liked Dick better than Cooch. You know, like that's just something I would say. So it's like for them, it's not as, I guess, safe, you know, for them to just ask questions or to, you know, do interviews with just regular media people. So it's better for them to go on T.I.'s podcast or go on Revolt TV because it's going to be more whitewashed. It's going to be more watered down. It's going to be more safe. So I don't know. I just find that whole situation with Jag Wright and um, everything that she's spilling just very, very interesting and very, very telling, you know. Um Let's see here. Brie from NYC sent 999. She says, hey, T, sending love as always. The reason why I give Jaguar the side eye is because she was on Miss Jones' radio show on Hot 97 back then talking greasy about other singers. Oh, wow. Wow. Let me put that up on the screen. So that's Brie from NYC. So I didn't know that because, like I said, I, I've just now become more familiar with her because of everything she's been saying online. And I think there's a very much a genuineness to her. You know, like when she speaks, I don't really get the vibe that she's lying, but it's just like, well, why? Like, why is all this being told? Like, we know a lot of these people are shitty, especially behind the scenes. So that's my thing is like, what is the 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 final objective? I guess is what I'm trying to look for. Like, what is the point of all this? Like, where is this going to lead to? What do you hope to get from blasting all these people besides making enemies? Um, Pillsbury says, Jaguar right? Um not not bringing tea she's bringing a tanker of water none of these artists are responding to jaguar that means that jaguar is telling the truth yeah I, like i said i don't think she's lying about a lot of this stuff you know i feel like a lot of it is truthful but the issue is it's just it's the way it's coming off you know is why i question it um malcolm hunter says i've been rocking with you since 2011 you don't age a day i see keep spilling that pipe and hot tea You'll make my day if you read this post. Oh, that's so sweet. Thank you so much, Malcolm. I appreciate it. Thanks for coming through and spending the day with me here. Um, let's see. They're running to these celebrity interviewers and the entire interviews be nothing but softball questions. So Mims01 wrote that. And that's the truth. It's always watered down stuff. Um, Nichelle is saying she's talking to greasy um let's see here I'm trying to see what are the comments i don't feel like jag is lying she has no reason to fiance mavin wrote that and i agree i definitely agree i don't feel like she's lying but like i said i feel like it's it's dangerous territory that she's going in and obviously something is going on behind the scenes the fact that she's moving and saying that there's a lot of police there you know, so that that made my ears perk up. So, yeah. So I don't know. I've been on for, um, oh, God, I've been on for almost two hours. So this was definitely a super long stream. You know, I didn't think it was going to be this long. But I think, like, we got a lot of stuff, you know, discussed and talked about. Um, so I really enjoyed this stream. I'm really glad that everybody was able to come through. And we didn't have, you know, too many issues today with YouTube. Um, so I think I'll just be using StreamYard until they can figure out whatever the hell they got going on on YouTube Live. So on that note, um, let me see. I got another super chat. Let me read this real quick. Um, Stephanie Brown says, hey, Internet sis, looks stunning per usual, super late. Love you. Thanks for shouting out my daughter the other day. Our birthday is Libra season's blessings to you and your boys. Thank you so much, sis. I appreciate it. And thanks for coming through. I'm glad you were able to catch the stream. Um, Shayla Porch just joined the membership. So yeah, shout out to everybody who joined the membership today. Um, the new link will be posted. And 
Um, if you don't know, like I was saying at the beginning of the stream, we're going to be doing our movie night this Friday. So definitely join us for the movie night. So on that note, somebody said Clive got killers too. Shit. They all do. Trust me. They all do. And that's the part like, you know, that folks need to be careful about because you just never know who these people have connections with in the streets. And a lot of them are so high up, they can make shit look like an accident and you'd never know it, you know? So you notice when Al B. Shore caught himself trying to spill that tea, he herp and backtrack. He got real quiet when he tried to spill that Kim Porter tea. So yeah, Puffy is definitely, he, he's definitely powerful and he's gotten away with a lot of bullshit. Even when she was talking about that Howard situation, that was deep. I didn't realize he didn't have permits to throw them parties. And he wasn't charged and people died. People died during that stampede. So yeah, he definitely has some connections. So on that note, you guys, thank you so much for joining me. I've been on exactly two hours. So I'm gonna go ahead and get up out of here, but I appreciate it. I'll talk to you guys later. You guys enjoy your evening. Bye.